our next agenda item. I'd just like to advise everybody, particularly in the room here, and those of you watching on webcam, that Sarah Bowl, it's her last day with us today. Uh, she's been with the Taupo Times now just over two years, and uh, been reporting um, certainly for, with all of you for this triennium, and part of the last triennium, and I'd just like to wish on behalf of all you here, uh, you all the best with your big OE overseas, Sarah. I think you've done um, an awesome job as a reporter in Taupo, a junior reporter to start with, but I'm sure you're going on to much bigger and brighter things. Um, your reporting has always been well balanced, and uh, I think you've been a credit to the Taupo Times, a credit to yourself. I've actually written Sarah a uh, mayor's reference to put in her CV for future uh, down the track for us. So I wish you all the well, Sarah, and uh, think of us occasionally when you're over in Vietnam, Thailand, and places like that, and... Uh, you're passing this way again, no matter what our occupations are in the future, um, come and see us. <laughs> <laughs> so, well done and good luck, eh? Thank you. Good on you. See ya. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, that in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to the uh, next agenda item is, is your SOIs, which is your statement of intent from our council controlled organisations. Um, Ms. McLeod, I see we've got uh, Ms. Cornelia Dempsey uh, at the back. Does she want to report on these, or are uh, you doing it? Or? No, I will, I will take it on um, okay. um, Cornelia's behalf, okay. um, and I will actually take the report as, as read. Um, we received the, the, the statements of intent last last month. Um, basically, the, uh, we don't staff have looked at it both from a policy perspective and from a financial perspective. And um, in all instances, you'll see from the suggested resolution that we are satisfied with the draft SOI, Statement of Intent, um, and have no specific re recommendations to make unless there's, there's points that councillors wish to. However, that doesn't stop governance having a that was my input into this, even though um, yes. uh, management uh, is satisfied with the draft SOIs. I will exactly open this my point. <laughs> I will open this to the floor, to governance. And um, and ask you if you'd like to go through them. We start with LAS, Local Authority Shared Services. Um, you can see the council recommendation there from management is satisfied with the draft SOA and no specific recommendations to make. Does anybody wish to add anything to that or comment at all that they'd like to see more or less of or anything of that nature? Being none, moving over to uh, BOP LAS, which is Bay of Plenty Local Authority Shared Services. Again, Council satisfied with the draft SOI and has no specific recommendations to make. TAA, Taupo Airport Authority. Oh, I'm sorry, was there anybody want to comment on that? Nope. Taupo Airport Authority. Um, the same recommendation there for management. However, I will put, pull out a point out in the first paragraph that the half-year result before tax showed a loss of $116,000, and I would go so far as to say it would be a reasonable assumption for councillors for a full year to double it. I ask, yep. is that a cash flow figure or is that including depreciation? It's including the depreciation. If we didn't have depreciation, we would have made a profit of around 200, I think it's 300,000. Yep. Yep. It's a depreciation on our new runway, 18 million and other buildings and ancillary things like that. So the dreaded uh, depreciation monster is getting us for sure. Okay, if there's nothing further on that one, uh, we've got DGLT, Destination Great Lake Topol, who we heard from today. Uh, quite interesting in that um, first figure to see a 27% increase in day trip spending and 22% increase in international nights. Uh, Councillor Kerr? I'll just, um, it may not be nothing, uh, anything because I haven't, you know, haven't seen this. Um, the timeliness of forwarding draft, it was received late. Is that, why is that documented or? Everyone else was received within time frames. I'm just wondering why theirs was received late. Yeah, it was, um, re there is a legislative requirement that, um, that we are supposed to have received uh, the accountability documents by the 1st of March. Um, this one came in, I think it was about three days, no, one day late, was it? Thank you. Right. So it's just simply noting that, um, and, you know, in one day, there's no penalty as a consequence no. of that, but it's just simply making the, right. uh, Thank you. the point. Okay, now of course this new one that we've uh, entered into in good faith through the recommendation of Mr. Man Hennett, New Zealand Local Government Funding Agency, uh, acronym NZFA. Uh, 
Uh, very new, very young. If there's no comments on that at all from anybody. And that's it. So moving back to the start of agenda item number 11, I think uh, what is the suggested resolution that the Council makes the following comments on the CCO draft 2012-13 SOIs as listed there. Uh, could we have a mover? Move, Councillor Kirk. Second, uh, Councillor Johnson, all in favour? Aye. 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 Moving now uh, to the submission that um, you had a presentation by, I think, Laurie Bedett and... Um, Tony Peach. Tony Chip, that's right. Um, about their uh, long-term plan, and this is um, the submission uh, Miss King has um, drafted for you. It's a separate, which I think you've all got. So um, I'll hand over to Miss King. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, essentially, um, what I wanted to take you through was um, the purpose of making the submission, which is just to ensure that we still have a a voice and can make comment on the Waikato Regional Council's draft long-term plan. Um, and then also to just look through the submission and see if there was anything in particular that you had any questions about, um, or if there was anything else you wanted to add, or if you didn't want something to be in there. Um, there's also the option that we don't make a submission at all, however, um, I wouldn't advise that it's part of our... Part of the purpose of this is also about our relationship with the Waikato Regional Council and, and the work that we do with them. So, Okay, so in the submission, um, the points that I have made are around the Protecting Lake Topal project changes. Um, as you know, we have that in our draft long-term plan and we work with them, the Crown and Ngāti Tūwhiritoa uh, on that project. Um, and you're all well aware of uh, the uh, situation we find ourselves in with the funding. So that's really just a... Just making that point there. Uh, regional economic development. Um, like ourselves, the Waikato Regional Council are also moving forward and looking at economic development and um, however on a regional basis. And we just want to make sure that we we are a part of that process, uh, just as we are with the Bay of Plenty. Uh, there's the regional contribution to the national bovine TB strategy. So as you're aware from that uh, presentation that we had from uh, the Waikato Regional Council, they collect the rate on the behalf of the Animal Health Board and they're looking to uh, cease doing that and have um, made comments that the Health Board can collect it in other ways. Uh, so the point that I've, I've made there is around how effective and efficient it would be and obviously that then in turn jeopardises the ability of the Animal Health Board to continue the work that they do. Um, I've also made the point um, which relates to Council's current policy around 1080, um, that Council doesn't wish to see the funding used for the aerial application, but it does support the funding being used towards research of alternative methods of eradication. Um, one of the big jumps um, in cost for Topal District Council comes about from the annual consent <coughs> holder charges and recovery of, of environmental monitoring costs. Um, they're in a position where... There has been some additional requirements that have come from central government in terms of monitoring, in terms of state of the environment. Um, and the point that we're really making in the submission is that we can appreciate uh, them recovering the costs of processing the administrative functions for the annual consent holders, such as ourselves. However, we're not sure that it's fair to then place the bulk of the monitoring costs for the state of the environment monitoring on the annual consent holders as well. So... They're two separate but related issues in terms of increased costs. So the, the, the question um, we've asked there is that we would appreciate further explanation um, because we don't necessarily think that's the, uh, the fairest way to fund the state of the environment monitoring. Uh, there's the co-governance and co-management. I'm sorry, do you want to take, can you want to take oh, yeah, questions during Yeah, I can take questions it? throughout, yeah. I'll go to Council Minister first, <coughs> then uh, Councillor Downer. Yeah, just on that area, so... You know, look, looking at this, so is it a figure to all general rate payers? Like I say, it's two separate issues. So there's a general cost of rate payers and then a targeted <coughs> rate, and they haven't defined how that's going to fall. Is that what we're talking about? No, it's not a targeted rate. What they've said is that they're they're going to increase the costs. So we have a we have a consent to take water um, for um, our different settlements, and there are charges that are applied to us on an annual basis, and they're increasing some of those, which is to recover the shortfall that they've found in that particular area. So they've found that they haven't actually been recovering the cost of the service of 
the annual consent. That would fall on the general rate payer? No, that falls on ourselves as the annual consent <coughs> holder, and then we will obviously pass that on to rate payers. Um, but the state of environment monitoring, they've also added that into that annual consent holder charge. <coughs> Excuse me. And the point we're making is, is that that is not necessarily the fairest way to do that because the state of the environment monitoring is about effectiveness um, of your regional policy statements and your plans, which is about benefiting the whole region. So we're saying we don't think it's necessarily fair that the brunt of the cost should be borne by an annual consent holder, particularly when the effects of a consent should be assessed at the time of consent being granted. Okay, so Councillor Dunnett. Errol, then, and that's good because that's where it comes down to double dipping again, because as a ratepayer paying regional rates, that's what should be allocated into that rate taken care of, but instead they're now passing it right. down again to double dip into, because right. that cost has to be brought back into the, 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 the ro local rate payer who's paying a rate here as well. And that applies also into erosion, you know, with our 55, 45. I believe that the rate that we pay there is, should actually cover for what they do give resource consents out to cover that, but then we have agreed into an uh, agreement with a 55-45 cut. So, you know, to me it's, you know, that's good. I Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. If I could just clarify one point, what they're actually doing is um, previously that um, the funding for the is, was, um, I think it's 640,000 that we've got floated there, that was actually paid for via the general rate and that's now being shifted to, so it's not actually a, a, a double dip, <coughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's the, where it's being drawn from, that they're shifting the, who, the Pays it. Pays. It's like shifting that cost on to local council. They're shifting it on to, um, they've done a rework of their consent categories and they, there are these extra large consents which are, um, are actually now covering the bulk of the cost of that. Now because we have some very large consents, we have three very large consents, <coughs> that's why that cost is actually shifting our way. So yes, it's, it's falling on to onto the local um, rate payer here, but previously it, it had been um, it had been part of the general rate, which would have also fallen here as well. And if it was left in the general rate, their rate and projected rate increase would have, have looked like more, eh? Yeah. Because you've shifted over into the targeted rate area, like a lot of councils have done, and they're saying, oh, we've only got a 2 or 3% rate increase, because they've taken it out of the general rate, and they put it over here in targeted rates to make their general rate look like it hasn't gone up as much. That's what you're trying to say, is that right, Councillor Dunnard? Yeah. Carry on. Um, it was its virtue the same. Oh, no, I won't go into that. Okay, so the next point there was about the co governance and co management of the Waikato River. Um, there's um, a lot of work, obviously, to be done in this area, and we just wanted to, 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 note, um, to note that. There's also the potential. Uh, plan change coming for the Waikato River which is in part obviously around the co-governance and co-management we just wanted to make sure that we, we're party to that right from the beginning so that we can make sure that the, the needs and requirements of our local uh, our, our local community are met. Um, there's the implementation of the late total erosion and flood strategy. Um, we're a bit concerned um, that it appears that funding's only been set aside in the first year so that we've, we've requested that it be set aside for the first three years as it is in our draft long term plan. Um, we've also made some comments around our transport connections um, in terms of, of what we support um, and also the, um, the reduction that NZTA is making um, in the road safety promotion program. Um, so we're just wanting to work with the council, the regional council to find efficiencies and cost savings so we can still undertake some of the projects that we currently do. Um, 